Hi, and welcome to Integrated Science. Today, we are going to take our knowledge of the law of conservation of energy and apply it to our formula for total mechanical energy. And so what we're really looking at when we do this is um, just finding out what is the potential energy and the kinetic energy and finding the sum, which means adding them together. So here's our equation that we're gonna be working with today, which is total mechanical energy equals our potential energy plus kinetic. So if we take a look at this situation that we have here, we have a pendulum, a ball on a string that is swinging across. So we're gonna use what we call our work energy relationship to fill out or fill in the blanks from the following system. The ball itself is two kilograms, which is an important piece of information. So I'm gonna highlight that right there. And we are going to just pretend that we are in a frictionless environment. So we're not gonna worry about what kind of frictional forces are acting on the ball. And then finally, we are going to fill in our bar graphs to show how the relationship between kinetic and potential energy are always present. Meaning that once again, the law of conservation of energy states, one energy is not created or destroyed. It just transfers back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so I'm gonna show you how that kind of looks today with using this pendulum here. So I'm going to, set this up down here. So as we can see, we have a few pieces of information that are really, really important. So um, they've provided us with the potential energy of 10. So imagine someone is holding this uh, ball right here in this section. So it has the potential to move, but it's not moving just yet. So we have that potential energy of 10 and the kinetic energy of zero. So that tells us that that's not moving. This 10 is very important because this is how much energy needs to stay in the whole system, meaning that whenever I'm adding up kinetic and potential, it always is going to have to equal to 10. So for example, I can see that I have potential energy of two right here. Um, I am therefore know that this kinetic energy has to be eight because it's always going to equal up to 10. And if this is zero potential energy, that means it's going to be 10 kinetic energy here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So first of all, this one down here, we can think that um, our TME, uh, once again, is going to equal to 10 joules because we can see that it has to be all the way up there. And since this is our first one starting here, we know that we can see it transferring. And we can even see right here, this is gonna be where that pendulum is in full swing and that our kinetic energy is there. However, we do not, they're asking us to find the height, which we, we don't have. However, we can use our equations that we learn from kinetic and potential to help us out to solve for this. So um, the first thing you can see is that velocity is at zero. So therefore that makes kinetic energy at zero. So we don't have to use the kinetic energy equation here to solve anything. However, because we also have the mass and we know the mass of the, the ball is two kilograms. However, we can use the potential energy equation, our GPE equals um, our mass, our gravity, and, oops, and our height. We can use that to help us figure out that height right there, which we don't know. So I'm gonna erase this just so I have a little bit more room here and move this guy up, there we go. So let's kind of fill in our variables. So we know GPE, that equals our 10 joules. We know the mass of this object is two kilograms. And we also know, I feel like I need more space. We also know um, gravity is always 9.8 meters per second squared. There we go. But we do not know the height. That's our x. So then we're just gonna kind of solve it here. So I'm gonna make this text box just slightly smaller. So I can move back down here. Let me create a new one. 
So now we're just going to plug in what we know. So we know that 10 joules equals its mass, the 2 kilograms, times our gravity, 9.8 meters per second. Whoops. And our height is what we don't know, our x. Make this a nice one little. There we go. So there's our equation. So um, now we're just going to simplify. So if you think about what's happening there, uh, we are looking at just simplifying first by using the order of operations. And so we're going to take 2 times 9.8, and I get 19.6. So my next one, 10 equals 19.6x. And then, um, as always, and I guess I should have put that in parentheses so I don't confuse you too much here. My next one is I want to get x alone. So in order to get x alone, if it's in a multiplication process, we have to do the inverse of it, which is division. So we're going to divide each side and get rid of the 19.6 so that we can get an x alone, or x by itself, I should say, 19.6 divide over on this side and that cancels remember they cancel each other out over here so I'm going to draw a line through there and a line through there and so therefore we're now just taking 10 and dividing by 19.6 and I end up with 0.54 equals 0.5, nope, sorry, 1, 0.51, and that's going to be meters. So we can go back and check ourselves. So let's let's plug that number in just to double check. Take 2 times 9.8 times 0.51, and we should come up with the 10 joules, which I get 9.9, .9, so I'm good. So that's our, that's our answer right there. So even if you wanted to, we could plug that in up here too. So our height is that 0.51. So now we have enough information to find everything else. So if we think about this last part where they're asking us to fill in our chart, our total mechanical energy is always going to be at 100% from zero all the way up to, well, I shouldn't say 100% or 10. So it's zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. We know that total mechanical energy is always going to be there. So technically, you could take each one of these bar graphs and fill them completely in. But looking at our potential energy, we know that that's at 10 here. So we are going to fill in this completely because it goes all the way up to 10, but kinetic is at zero. So we're going to leave that completely at zero. So that's our one bar chart. If we look at the next one, remember I already said, I know it's got to equal up to 10. So I've got potential energy just at two joules. And our kinetic energy is going to go all the way up to eight joules. So Still, the total energy of 10 joules is there. That's why we filled this one all the way up to 10. But now it's split. And so I'm going to put a little text box here, knowing that I know this one is 8 joules. Because once again, we want it to equal up to that total, that 10. And now this one's asking me to solve for both height and velocity. So I'm going to make this now. Sorry. Move it there and make a new text box. So this one's going to be a little bit more intensive because we're going to have to use both kinetic and potential energy. So let's start by finding the height. Once again, we're going to use GPE. So um, I'm just going to plug in here. So I know my potential energy is 2 joules, and I'm going to use our mass, our 2 kilograms, um, gravity, 9.8. And we don't know the height again. So we've got kind of the same idea. So simplifying once again, taking 2 times 9.8, which gives me 2 equals, um, we can just use the same number from the last section, the 9.8x. Um, and once again, we want to get x alone. So we're going to divide each side by that 19.8. So 2 divided by 19.6. Sorry, I think I said 8 just a minute ago. 
I end up getting x equals 10. Sorry, point one zero. And so that is my height. And once again, you can check yourself if you need to. Um, I'm going to make a new text box here. And put in the height of point one zero. So velocity they're asking for us to find. And I'm going to scroll down just a little bit here so I can make a new text box for there. Velocity is the same thing, is that we're going to create a text box here and let's show our work. So um, kinetic energy, we know Ke equals um, the 8. We know the mass is 2 kilograms, but we don't know the velocity. That's, that's our, we don't know that one. So we're just going to set it up into our equation here. So there, there's my T chart. Let's think about it that way. Lots of text boxes for this one. That's okay. If you want to print it out and handwrite it, I don't blame you. So 8 equals um, 1 half of the mass, which is 2, and our velocity squared. And so this one is one where we get to do our fun little calculation with our square root. So there's our equation. So once again, to simplify, we are just going to take two and divide it in half, which gives us one. So eight equals one times x squared. I'm just gonna cut and copy this here. should have done it completely. All right, so to get eight alone, or to get our x squared alone, we're gonna divide each side by one. And when we do that, it still ends up equaling eight equals our x squared. However, we're not completely done because we have that square root right there. So in order to get rid of the square, we have to do the inverse, which is our square root. So we're gonna find what the square root of eight is. And I don't know if I can put that actually on a, let's see here. Oops. So when I type it into the calculator, I get 2.8 equals x. And so um, you're going to find that square root, and I'm just going to draw it here. So to find the inverse of it, you take the square root of each one of these, and you should get 2.8. And once again, if you plug that all back into the equation, it should work out just perfectly for you. So that's, that's kind of how you work these out. So I want you to go ahead and try the last two and solve for kinetic height and velocity, and then really think about what's happening with this one, because they didn't provide anything, but think about this ball swinging here, the pendulum, and reaching this point before it turns back around and goes back the other way. So I bet you could probably figure it out, especially with what they've provided right here for you. So hopefully that was helpful using total mechanical energy.